Hey guys, this is the Great Jedi and welcome back to the channel. Now before we get into the video, please consider subscribing, smashing the like button, commenting, and hitting the notification bell down below. Anyways, let's jump right into the video. So today we're going to go ahead and go over the community transmission for the update tomorrow. It is officially called the Age of Rebellion update. So it says, incoming transmission, the Age of Rebellion updates arrives tomorrow, February 26th, and with it, a great selection of new content. Okay, so the only before going into this, the only thing that I'm really expecting is the original trilogy coming to co-op and then Capital Supremacy. So let's get right into this. So it says, we've got Age of Rebellion co-op location, seven in total. Okay, so that's cool. We knew that there was going to be more than four. So seven's really good. I'm kind of curious. I hope they mention which seven. But it says two new reinforcements in the form of Ewok Hunter and ISB Agent. Four new blasters. Oh my goodness. Okay. Four capital ships. Four co-op. Hero improvements. AI upgrades. And two new Heroes vs. Villains map. It's a packed month for Star Wars Battlefront 2. Let's dive straight in. Okay. Right there. That's a lot of content. New blasters, new reinforcements, new maps, hero improvements. Oh, okay, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. All right, let's get right into it, guys. <sighs> All right, so it says Age of Rebellion update coming in February 2020. February begins our focus on the Age of Rebellion. We know this has been a greatly requested update for our community, and it's going to be a big one. Now that we're heading back into the original trilogy, we thought it was time to bring a couple of new reinforcements to the roster, both of which will be closed or classed as infiltrators. Okay. So they have the Ewok Hunter here. It says joining the rebellion will be the Ewok Hunter, a reinforcement option we know that many of you have been talking about since we re first released Ewok Hunt back in 2018. The Ewok Hunter is a cunning bundle of fur that hunts its prey with bow, spear, and whistles. Okay, so that bow is definitely new. That's for sure. So that's probably going to be their main attack rather than the spear. I don't know. It says spear. So I'm kind of curious to see what's their main thing going to be. Is it going to be the spear or the bow? By the look here, it looks like it might be the bow, but I'm not sure. Oh, it goes and talks about it right now. The Ewok Hunter's primary weapon will be its hunter bow, which has dual firing modes okay uh when the bow uses its default zoom so no zoom um it will pick out targets for you to fire at similar to lando's dead eye ability okay so i'm assuming that's lando's middle ability right there or unless i mean finn's dead eye because Lan lando's middle ability is a sharp shot but we'll just have to see it says when zoomed, you'll have manual aim control for far greater control and the ability to hold your draw longer to increase maximum speed and damage. Okay, that seems pretty cool. While firing the bow, the Ewok Hunter does not appear on scanners. Should the Ewok find themselves in a situation that requires more damage and resistance, the ability uh, Valiant Horn comes into play. Blowing the horn will not only improve their attacks, but will also grant them additional damage resistance. Be warned, though. While Valent Horn is active, the Ewok Hunter will constantly appear on enemy scanners. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. They say, also at their disposal will be their trusty Whistles pouch, bringing a little bit of indoor with you. No matter which battlefront you're on, and throw these fierce fire spitters towards a nearby enemy to disrupt and inflict burn damage to them. Okay, so that's pretty cool. They're taking that from Ewok Hunt. Activate Hunter's Instinct, and the Ewok Hunter will be drawn upon their natural instincts, allowing them to uncover and single out weaked, weakened opponents. Okay, so my thoughts about this is... I'm assuming they're going to be available on every map. I'm not sure if they're just going to be exclusive to indoor. I mean, I kind of hope not. I mean, obviously... For immersive standpoint, yeah, it only makes sense for them to be on indoor. But the, at the end of the day, it's a video game. You want as many options as you possibly can. So 
I hope they're available with all the original trilogy maps. But we'll just have to see. I mean, I will agree that the Ewoks will look kind of funny on Hoth. I'm not, I'm not going to lie about that. But I would have rather have seen maybe the Ewok Hunter exclusive to Endor. And maybe another Rebel... Uh, no, another rebel like reinforcement like the rebel pilot to come and be a reinforcement for all the other maps but I'm not sure I don't know I thought we might get the rebel pilot but anyways moving on to the ISB agent for the galactic empire the ISB agent will be joining the ranks proving the empire with their first opportunity of a dual wielding character Okay, so this seems like it's going to be like the ARC Trooper. Armed with two RK-3 blasters, the ISB agent is skilled in intelligence, gathering, and close combat, working tirelessly to route the enemies for the Empire. The ISB agent excels at getting in and out of combat zones, especially when her assault training ability is activated. While under the effects of assault training, the ISB agent will benefit from increased sprint speed during which she gains an overall damage reduction. Okay, so that seems like a pretty cool ability. Locating enemies of the Empire is made easier thanks to the Imperial Intel ability. Once activated, the ISB agent will scan the nearby area to reveal the four closest enemies. The number of enemies revealed will be increased by defeating more while it's active up to a total of 10. Double your efforts is her final ability and empowers nearby allies by regenerating, regenerating their base health. It can only be used if there's an ally in range. Okay, so that seems pretty interesting. Look pretty cool here. So I think this is going to be a really cool reinforcement. Definitely unique. I wonder if this is going to be like the ARC Trooper since of the dual building. Alright, moving on to Age of Rebellion Co-op. The Age of Rebellion will be coming to co-op with a total of 7 locations. We're particularly excited about bringing both Kessel and Jawa's Palace to co-op, but equally so as to be returning the likes of Tatooine, Death Star 2, and other favorites. So there's a full list of of Age of Rebellion planets coming to co-op is as follows. So they're bringing Yavin, Death Star 2, Endor, Hoth, Tatooine, Kessel, and Jabba's Palace. So I'm really happy to see that because those are like the main ones. So I'm really excited to try all these out. And if you guys haven't hit the notifications bell, definitely hit it because I'm going to be making content about this when the update goes live. So moving on to the Age of of Rebellion update, the capital ship co-op. With Supremacy, we have created a number of capital ships. The Venator, Dreadnought, MC-85, Star Cruiser, and the First Order Resurgent Class Star Destroyer. In February, we will start the process of bringing these ships into co-op, meaning they will be standalone maps for you to attack and defend, starting with the Republic, Venator, and Separatist Dreadnought. Okay, so that's cool. So they're adding those capital ships to co-op. That's cool. All right, now it says new weapons. All right, now I'm getting really excited here because if you guys didn't know, one of the things they did promise was new weapons at um, before launch, saying that they will add new weapons to the game and they were trying to pass off of the, like the new reinforcement blasters as new weapons and like General Grievous' lightsabers were new. Like that was just complete bull crap. They were trying to pull that off, but... They it looks like they're finally getting new weapons, and I'm super excited. I did not expect any of this, so oh, this is just gonna be another. I didn't expect this to be like a really big update because we've had several big updates in a row, so I'm really excited. It says we're expanding the selection of trooper weapons as each of the four classes will receive a new blaster cross era compatible to equip and modify. So the E-11D, okay, this medium range blaster rifle was manufactured for precision and re re uh, reliability and will be available for the assault class. The available mods, okay, so that's cool. They're going to have more modifications. So they're going to have reduced recoil, flashlight, interesting, okay, and single fire mode. Um, basically, the reduced 
Recoil is the light stock allowing sustained fire with less recoil. Flashlight is a barrel mounted light source that reveals enemies while zooming. Um, and then I hope the while zooming it's not like into the scope. We'll just have to see. Because that'll be kind of annoying. But you never know. They might make it work. Then the single fire mode is enables controlled single fire mode with each pull of a trigger. Okay, so that's cool. And this, oh, so you, this sh tells you how to unlock it. It says defeat 50 enemies as the assault class in co-op. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. Then they have the mods unlock, which is get 25, 75, 100 kills using ED or E11D. And then looks like the nether blaster that's coming is DL18, which is a short range DL18 is a popular blaster pistol in the outer rim. While slightly less powerful than its heavier counterparts, it makes up for that with a faster rate of fire. And the available mods for that is improved cooling, reduced spread, and repeating mode. So if you guys really don't know what that is, I will go ahead and like all the specifics and stuff, I will link the, the command transmission in the description down below so you guys can check it out for yourselves. But... I, most of the stuff is pretty self-explanatory. It's unlocked, um, and it you defeat. It's unlocked by defeating 50 enemies as the officer class in co-op. So, the E11D is for the assault. The DL18 is for the officer. And then, obviously, to unlock those mods, you have to get 25, 75, and 100 kills using the DL18. And then the next weapon is the T21, which is a robust short range heavy blaster manufactured for continuously discharging powerful bolts at the expense of low rates of fire. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, the available nods is improved zoom, improved handling, and burst mode. And the burst mode is a three blast burst. It's unlocked by defeating 50 enemies as an enemy class in co op. And the mod to unlock it is to get 25, 75, and 100 kills using the T21 blaster. Now it looks like the last blaster that they're adding is the Cycler Rifle. So while appearing crude when compared to the more sophisticated blasters, the long range cyclo, wait, Cycler Rifle was a versatile and durable weapon popular among the Tuscan Raiders native to Tatooine. Okay, so that's kind of what it looks like. So that's going to be pretty cool. The available mod is dual zoom, reduced recoil, and improved coiling. Um, then you can unlock it by defeating 50 enemies as a separatist class in co-op. And then the mods to unlock it, you have to get 25, 75, and 100 kills using the cycler rifle. And that looks like that's it for all of the blasters. But my only concern is that never that doesn't fix the weapon problem that we have right now because we have a lot of blaster options it's just with the same stats so I mean I'm glad that they're adding weapons that's definitely a plus but I do feel like they should still work on a weapon overhaul that they haven't mentioned a while back ago so that way we have like a ton of new weapons so instead of it like the assault class has a lot of weapons but they're limited to their certain era if they open all of the eras to all the assault class and just change the stats we'll have tons of weapons to choose from so i would still like to see a weapon overhaul in the future but we'll just have to wait and see now it looks like we're getting some hero improvements so this is looking pretty cool it says during the february update we will also be making some changes to a number of heroes including the anticipated improvements to leia yes i'm very excited for this change so the Leia ability improvements, we're making a number of changes to Leia, and it starts with modifications to her E11 blaster. So the start damage is increased from 32 to 36. Okay, so there's a buff there. End damage is increased from 17 to 19. There's a buff there. Okay. Increased damage fall off start distance from 5 to 20. And they increase the damage fall off end distance from 10 to 40. They reduce the recoil and reduce the spread of her blaster file. So just to her main blaster there's like a bunch of buffs so i'm pretty sure her main blaster is going to be pretty good now especially with that secondary fire but they go on to say in addition to the above modifications we are also implementing changes to her shield which now also heals friendly forces within it for five health every second 
Okay, so that's very interesting. Now I feel like that squad shield is even going to be even... It's going to be way better now. Now they can go in there and just get healed. That's pretty cool. I hope that she can also, like, heal. But it says, which now also heals friendly forces. Well, I also hope it heals her if she goes in it. That way it'd be a, not only a use for your teammates, but also for her. Because in HPV, that's where it's very situational. But now, if she needs to regain some health, that's a good way for her to put down her shield and get some health. But anyways, they say rounding out the changes to Leia is a change to her flash grenade, which is being replaced by the thermal detonators. Okay, so that was pretty heavily implied by the tweets they've made in the past. But they said Leia will have the ability to throw three thermal detonators, which explode after 0.85 seconds. Okay, did not expect that one. So I wonder how much damage those thermal detonators are going to be, because she's going to have three. So that's going to be a pretty dang good ability. It says this ability will enter cooldown once all three detonators have been thrown. Okay. Due to the changes above, some tweaks are being made to her star cards. Okay, so we're basically getting like new star cards in a way. So, basically, the old card was blinded, the new card is fearless, and the blast radius of thermal detonators is increased. I'll probably go with that one. The old card is blinding reveal, um, that, and the new card is called handy device. It's where the cooldown of the thermal detonators is reduced. Okay, so depending on how powerful these thermal detonators are, like, you can just stack them with the star cards and make them the explosion bigger, and the cooldown is reduced so you can use them constantly. So that seems, I'm pretty excited for these changes. Uh, it says one modification to Leia's milestones will also be implemented in this net, I'm sorry, in this update. Which sees blinding flash grenade changed to plenty of explosions. To complete this milestone, you will need to defeat 30, 30 opponents with Leia's thermal detonators. If you've already completed the milestone, it will be unlocked. So there is no requirement to unlock it again okay so if you already have it unlocked you don't need to unlock it again um it says chewbacca's bowcaster improvements okay so they're changing his bowcaster which they've tweeted about in the past they said chewie's bowcaster will be receiving a set of tweaks and improvements with the aim of making everyone's favorite wookie more efficient against troopers while also missing fewer shots okay so that's cool scoped they're doing one powerful shot that will allow Chewbacca to be more efficient at long distance. Okay, so that makes sense. Kind of like how we did in Force Awakens against Kylo. And they said non-scoped is three bolts um, are grouped in a triangle formation. Okay, so that's definitely going to reduce that spread. So that's definitely good. It says while using Furious Bowcaster, uh, scooped five bolts um, in, a cross, um, in a cross tighter than not scoped. Okay. And then not scoped is five bolts in a larger circle. So that's a bit of a buff there. And then we have some auto player updates. Okay, so it says in January we have made an update to our auto players to allow them to play as Joydicas in both co op and instant action. I have noticed that. Um, and those AI players in co op are pretty dang good with those Joydicas. But they say in February. The auto players will be updated further as they will now be able to use vehicles. Okay, so this is a big change, especially for instant action. All you offline players out there, we got vehicles. So I'm really happy for that change. Uh, it says, furthermore, auto players in instant action will now be able to play as friendly heroes. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So before, you can only be um, a hero, but the opposing team could have a lot more heroes. So it'd be like, you'll get in those situations where it's 2v1 and you're like, oh... I'd like another hero to help me out. Now you can. There's going to be friendly heroes by your side. This means that you'll be able to run uh, into the battle side by side with some of your favorite heroes. We're also implementing auto player squads with instant action, allowing you to squad up with the AI. Okay, so that's a really cool change. This brings with it the ability to spawn on them, allowing you to get back into the action even quicker. So I'm really excited that they're giving the offline attention too. Now they're moving on the Heroes vs. Villains. The fans of the Heroes vs. Villains game mode will be pleased to hear that both the MC-85 Star Cruiser and the Resurgent Class Star Destroyer are coming to coming as playable maps. So I'm really glad to hear that. I am a big Heroes vs. Villains person. So I am so happy that we're getting new maps for that. And if you guys don't know, the Heroes vs. Villains map rotation is very big. Very big. 
They go on to say we have also made a map layout changes to both Genosis and Yavin 4 for this mode and we're keen to hear your feedback on both. Okay. Now it says reinforcement and trooper updates. Okay. Within the update we will be making some improvements to a number of Age of Rebellion reinforcements. Okay. So the Wookiee Warrior, Imperial Rocket Trooper, and Rocket Jumper will all be receiving updated appearances. Okay, those these new appearances will become the default look for each of them with the previous default available as an unlocked option to choose from. Nice. So we're basically getting reinforcement skins. So that's going to be really cool. It looks like for the Rocket Trooper and the Wookiee Warrior. So I'm really excited to see that. It says Troopers are also getting updated accordingly. The Imperial Death Trooper will receive the E-11 D Blaster Rifle and the Rocket Trooper will be equipped with the E-11 for improved combat efficiency. And the Jump Trooper will use an um, A-280C for automatic fire. Okay, so that, and then they have a little GIF here of the Rocket Trooper and the Wookiee Warrior. They say we have also tweaked the dual wielding functionality which will improve the both Arc Trooper and the ISB Agent. Okay, so they're changing that. It says both reinforcements will now play more consistently when firing the pistols. They will now be automatic and moved onto a single button, which Power Blast will become an alternate fire ability. Okay, so that's definitely giving a buff to the dual wielding people because if you're on console, basically it's harder to aim when you're do, like doing the dual wielding, the aim button and the trigger button but now if you can just hold down the trigger button that's going to drastically improve the aim so if you already had good aim before then looks like it's going to be even easier so they got a big buff I really like this Wookiee skin though the Wookiee Warrior skin that's pretty cool so I'm glad they're kind of like buffing the reinforcements though with the blasters and things like that I really like that because if they're, the Rebel, especially when they're only getting an Ewok, I feel like them balancing the other reinforcements will help balance out the gameplay. Alright, now it says the UI updates. Now the Age of Rebellion update will also include a number of user interface options allowing you greater freedom over how you, your UI will look. These include all these different things. Okay, so basically everything that you guys see on your screen all your HUD stuff, you're able to turn um, off, on, no outline, default, all this other options. If you guys want to see all the specifics, they're here on screen. I'll also link it down below in the description. Um, they say that there have also been improvements to the PC chat window, which is now positioned at the top right corner of the screen and is included within a vertical stack of these three widgets. Network status, PC chat, kill, and event log. Various visual updates on the scoreboard have been made too, with character levels now on display. So that's really cool. So now you can see what levels you're going against, and if you're on, like, a, I don't know, a match with noobs, then you know that. So it's, I hope that also makes sure that you're kind of, like, being matchmaked similar, like, to your level. I don't think that's really going to happen, but at least you can tell now. It says the Age of Rebellion update is shaping up to be a great addition to the game and it all arrives tomorrow, Wednesday, 26th of February. We'll see you on the Battlefront. Punch it, the Star Wars Battlefront 2 team. Okay, so my overall thoughts are I'm really shocked that we're even getting skins, reinforcement, a bunch of hero and reinforcement changes. The OT is coming to co-op, Capital Supremacy, we're getting the new maps for them. So I'm really excited. I was going to go over the patch notes, but I see that this video is already over 20 minutes. So I'm going to save that for the next video, guys. So yeah, that's going to do it for this quick community transmission. Anyways, don't forget to subscribe. This is the Great Jedi, and may the Force be with you always.